friends. Amen. Uh, I know uh, around the Griffin family would say that the Lord is good. Amen. As a matter of fact, they, they have a family member, uh, Deacon James Jackson, who is 101 years old. Amen. Blessed. 
Behold, God said to Jacob, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. Bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken. And look, Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely uh, the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose early in the morning, took the stone that he had put in his hand, set up a pillar, poured oil on it, and called that place Bethel, meaning house of God. We've read, and I want to talk about when God becomes real. All right. We've read from Genesis 28th chapter. And I simply want to talk about when, when God becomes real. My brothers and my sisters, as we look life of Jacob, there are basically three scenes, three episodes, three primary events that uh, should, should garner or should capture our attention as it relates uh, to the spiritual development of Jacob. Look at the life of Jacob, uh, we'll see some significant spiritual growth and development uh, in the life of a man who started out as a trickster. A man who started out as a hustler. A man who started out as a faker. But we see three events in his life that, 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 that help us to understand uh, the spiritual growth uh, in the progress of Jacob. Uh, we find Jacob early on in his life playing around like he knew God. Uh, then we find Jacob going through some things in his life. And then after Jacob goes through these things in his life, uh, he realized, now I know that God is actually real. Uh, and some of us, listen, some of us, uh, I know that, that we're in church this morning. I know uh, that we know certain songs. We know certain Bible verses. But, but, but I wonder today, is, is God, is he really real to us? Uh, do we know uh, for sure that, that beyond a shadow of a doubt, no matter what we face, no matter how it may look, no matter how our life may look, do you know uh, that God is real? And I'm not simply talking about feeling because, listen, you can't always trust your feelings. Uh, there's somewhere beyond your feelings. But well, you got to know that God is real because, listen, sometimes uh, your feelings may not be where they need to be. And, only know that God is real in your feelings, and listen, uh, you, 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 you might be lost. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, do you know that God is real? When we look at these three episodes in his life, first of all, uh, and we're going to deal with this in depth today, the first uh, episode or event uh, or stage in the life of the religious faith development of Jacob is Jacob dreaming. We see it in Genesis 28. We're going to talk about Jacob dreaming, but but, but, but the second area of development uh, we find in Genesis 32nd chapter where uh, Jacob is wrestling. Uh, Jacob uh, moves on from Bethel and uh, he, he goes to another place and uh, we find that, that, that after uh, he discovers that, that God is real and after uh, God gives him his uh, purpose for living, uh, Jacob, like many of us, he begins to struggle and to, to wrestle with that purpose because uh, when God uh, places uh, a purpose on us, that also comes with a burden. It comes, uh, it comes with ridicule. Oh, it, it comes with being ostracized. It means we can no longer be like we used to be. It, uh, it means we've got to maybe sacrifice some friends and sacrifice some relationships. So, so, so Jacob, we find himself not wrestling with friends, right. not even wrestling with himself. But Jacob wrestles with God. Yeah. And many of us know by experience, whenever you try to wrestle with God, oh, yeah. God will let you try to wrestle. Right. But only you know something, God is the only one that's undefeated. All right, exactly. And he's going to be undefeated yes, until he comes back. So Jacob, he, he wrestled with God. Uh, wrestled with God so much uh, that, 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 that God, God didn't give him a, a knockout blow, but he gave him a TKO. Oh, right. 
uh, and, and when Jacob gave in to the will of God, you find that Jacob uh, had a wound. He had an injury. Uh, he, he was walking with a limp. Uh, and a whole lot of us are walking with limps. Listen, my brothers and sisters, because uh, we've been wrestling with God. Wrestling with what God wants us to do in our life. A half-hearted commitment. And a half-hearted sacrifice. And half-hearted worship. And half-hearted passion for the Lord. And we can't figure out why we keep going through what we're going through. But, but at some point, uh, God is going to win out. And when God wins out, listen, he's not going to take away your limp. You just got to praise God with your limp. Listen, Paul tried to wrestle with God. And when Paul tried to wrestle with God, he had a limp. He prayed, said, Lord, listen, I know I was persecuting believers, but now I'm on your side. And now that I'm on your side, I need you to take away this thorn in my flesh. The Lord said, no, I'm going to take away the thorn. If I take away the thorn, that is your reminder of what you used to be. So, so you never forget uh, that if it had not been for me, you wouldn't be where you are right now. So Lord, I gave Jacob a little limp, a reminder uh, that, that it was God that, that, that helped him to realize you can't be all you need to be without God. And some of us need to thank God for our limp, thank God for our scars, thank God for the wounds in our life. You ought to praise God with a band aid, with a hurt arm, with a broke heart, with a troubled mind. This is a reminder of where God has brought us. But then, third episode, uh, we find in Genesis 49 that Jacob, uh, in fulfillment of the purpose we are going to see in Genesis chapter 28, uh, Jacob winds up being a blessing or pronouncing a blessing uh, upon his children and upon those who will come after him. Now notice here, first of all, uh, as we look at that first episode uh, in Jacob's life, Jacob dream. Our brothers and sisters, we notice that, that, that God becomes real to Jacob All right. at a place called Bethel. All right. We'll notice later on in the text that he names it Bethel, meaning house of God. All right. so, so notice that, that God becomes real to Jacob at Bethel, at the house of God. Now, now notice how it is that God uh, becomes real to Jacob at Bethel. At Bethel, Jacob was in the right place yes. for a vital experience of God. Yes. Listen, you got to be in the right place uh, in order to have a vital and life-changing experience yes. with God. Understand, Jacob was on the run. Hmm. And Jacob could have gone a whole lot of different places. Oh, but even though he was scared and running, he went directly to where God wanted him to go. So understand, you're not going to know God is real uh, until you go or you're in the right place for a vital experience of God. Now notice this right place for Jacob in this vital experience of, with God is in the wilderness. A lot of us don't like the wilderness. But the right place for Jacob to find out that God is real is in a barren place where there's no one and nothing else that you can trust in. Listen, if you had a point in your life where you don't have nobody else you can trust, nobody else to depend on, everything around you seems barren and won't grow, you're in the right place for a vital experience with God. But not only was he in the wilderness, which made it the right place, but it was at the end of the day. Listen, uh, we can be in the wilderness at the beginning of the day and still think we can make it. But notice the right place was not only in the wilderness, but also at the end of the day when Jacob was tired, when he was worn out from toiling all day and from walking all day. Listen, my brothers and sisters, to have a vital experience with God, sometimes you got to be in a barren place. And sometimes God got to leave you in that barren place until it gets dark. Because if it's barren and in the middle of the day, you might think there's some prospects outside of God. But if you're in a barren place and it's dark, then you realize God is the only one you can trust. So Jacob was in the house of God. Here's something else. Sometimes you can be in the house of God 
and experience barrenness. Sometimes you can be in the house of God and experience darkness because God will shine brightest even in his own house when he allows you to be barren, when he allows you to get dark even in his own house because some of us are so arrogant, full of self-righteousness and pride that we can't even see the glory of the Lord in his own house. I know y'all don't like it, but it's right. So sometimes God even in the house of God, that the glory of the Lord can fill his place. Think of it. It's in the right place at Bethel. But not only uh, at Bethel was Jacob in the right place, but Jacob was lying down on the right kind of pillow. Man, I, I was traveling. I was in Baltimore. They had some pillows. I mean, they were soft, but they were so thick and not broke in, I couldn't hardly sleep. But then I've been to some other places where the pillows are so soft, I didn't want to get up. Listen, uh, 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 Jacob had some pillows like I had in Baltimore. They were stone hard pillows. Listen, they were hard pillows on a hillside. So not only was he in a barren place that was dark, but he was in a rough place on a hillside where you couldn't get any rest. Have you ever been at a point where you just couldn't get any rest? And when you can't get no rest, it ain't simply because of physical rest. Uh, you just tired of toiling with life. Uh, and God uh, sometimes got to make your rest even less rest. Uh, so you can realize, my brothers and sisters, that God has you in this rough place for a reason. So Jacob was in the right place on the right kind of pillow. Then Jacob was also in the right mood. Bethel, Jacob was in the right mood. He was running from the wrath of his wrong brother. See, sometimes we got to be scared out of our mind. Uh, sometimes we got to be confronted with our past to get ourselves in the right mood for a right experience with God. Uh, sometimes God got to make us look back and realize who did what to us and realize what we did to somebody else and help us to realize what it is we're really running from and what we're really trying to run to. So Jacob was in the right mood for a vital experience with God. Then God becomes real secondly when, when Jacob comes to this, this ladder of prayer. Notice it says there's a ladder uh, that reaches from earth to heaven. Uh, and notice descriptively in the dream it says there are angels ascending and descending. Helping us to understand that, listen, a ladder implies that, that somehow uh, you and I might be able to get on the ladder and climb up. But the implication here with the angels uh, descending and ascending is that we can't get on the ladder and get up to God. Amen. That, that God has to come down to us. And, and notice, uh, God comes down to Jacob yes. when he's in the right place, yes. when he's in a hard spot, yes. and when he's in the right mood. Right. And what that reminds you and I of is something we need to understand. Whatever we find in the basement of our soul, is what we need to carry to the foot of the cross. Amen. Amen. Listen, ain't nothing good in the basement. Amen. It's discarded stuff in the yes. basement. Yes. It's mold and mildew yes. in the basement. Too many of us, we, we don't want to bring our basement to the Lord. But the Lord says, whatever is in the basement of your soul, whatever is in the bottom of your soul, Whatever is the worst part of you, yes. take whatever is in the yes. basement of your soul and bring it to the foot of the cross. Right. Jesus didn't die on the cross for your best day. All right. He died on the cross because he had your worst yes. day. And so whatever is so bad and despicable about you, you need to carry that. So he talked Jacob. When Jacob was dealing with the basement level areas of his life, and he said, Jacob, I want you to bring those areas to my life. And they're basically, listen, they're four rungs to prayer. 
And we see those four wrongs to prayer in the life of David, excuse me, Jacob. Because all of us like Jacob, we only cry for one, excuse me, cry out to God for one or four reasons. Jacob uh, cried out to God because he was trying to escape external evil. Come on. He tricked his brother for his birthright. His brother said, uh, matter of fact, we often say that in benediction, and it's so theologically incorrect. Uh, when it says in Genesis that, that may the Lord watch between me and ye while we're absent one from another, uh, that, that really wasn't a pronouncement of a blessing or a benediction. That was really uh, uh, Esau, basically, right? Esau saying, Jacob, the Lord better show enough watch between me and you yeah, yeah. while we absent one from another. Yeah, yeah. Let me translate. Esau was saying, if I ever catch up with you, See, some of us read our Bibles and we just be saying stuff, that benediction, and all we know is saying, listen, you better hope the Lord get to you before I do. Because that's what Esau was actually saying. All right? So, so, so he was crying out to God to escape from external evil from his brother. Many of us, we cry out to God whenever someone is after us. But then he cried out to God for deliverance from his own internal evil. Because he realized when he and God were alone, there were some areas of his life that God needed to fix. Then Jacob cried out to God uh, for the needed grace to wait until his change came. All right. Listen, whether we're running from somebody or running from ourselves, we need God to give us the grace to hang on and hang in there until our deliverance comes. But then Jacob cried out to God for submission. And the reason why he cried out to God for submission is because sometimes our will needs to be merged or submitted to the will of God. Amen. See, what keeps some things from happening in our life and keeps us from really knowing that God is real and having a vital experience with God is that we won't submit our will to God's will. Amen. We're so puffed up with ourselves Amen. that we think what we want to do is better than what God wants. Right. But until we acquiesce to the will of God like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. But then thirdly, we see that God becomes real to Jacob in some unexpected revelations of God. We know it's unexpected because in Genesis 28 and verse 16, Jacob was almost towards the end of worship. There'd been the call to worship, there'd been the responsive reading, there'd been praise and worship, there'd been a song, there'd been the pastoral prayer. There had been observations. They had gave the offering. The choir had sung. The sermon had been preached. It was at the end of service, and Jacob said, Wait a minute. The Lord was here. And I didn't even know. It's a shame that we can be in the house of God and be so distracted by things that have nothing to do with God. Preoccupied with our own sin, that we almost to the end of service, and like Jacob, we said, "Wait a minute, there was some movement in here, but I didn't feel the movement because the Lord was in this place, and I didn't even know." Well, guess what? We ain't to the benediction ledge. We ain't too late. Somebody missed that. But we're not to the benediction yet, so it ain't too late. Uh, the Lord is in this place. And if you didn't know it up to this point, it's still time. Notice he experienced uh, God in some unexpected revelation. God revealed himself to him in nature. God revealed himself to Jacob in the ordinary surroundings of life. And often we can overlook the ordinary surroundings of life when it comes to God. We're looking bright lights. We're looking uh, for the mega situations. We're looking for the clouds to descend. But sometimes God will reveal himself to us in the ordinary surroundings of life. But like Jacob, we also need to understand that God will reveal himself in the hour of loneliness and in the hour of trial. I don't know about you, but I've come to a point in my life where I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm no longer simply dreaming. 
And I'm no longer wrestling with God. Because I realize that God is real. Reverend Charles Nix Jr. wrote a song in 1975. He said, he's so real. Real in my soul today. He has washed all of my sins away. Somebody ought to know today that if you had a vital experience with God, Jesus loved just bubbles over in your soul. But if he's not in your soul, he's not going to be bubbling over. But he's bubbling over in my soul right now. Because God is real to me. He's so real. So real in my soul. I know that he's washed my sins away. And my name is written over in glory. Is God real? Is he real in your soul? Is he real in your mind? Is he real in your heart? If God is real, you ought to say thank you. If God is real, you ought to say praise the Lord. If God is real, you ought to say hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. God is real. Right now. 